Welcome to Land Academy. This is the Cash Flow from Land Show, where we show you how to buy unwanted vacant land and sell it for more on the internet. I'm Steve Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We, we are, are your hosts. hosts. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we are the experts in this niche land flipping business. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. All right, let's get this show started. That's Jack Butella for Land Academy. Welcome to our Cash Flow from Land Show. We show you how to buy property for half and resell it the next day. Great information and instruction from Jack, that's me. And inspiration from Jill, that's me. Here's some funny stuff that happened to us recently. I realized Stevens Beach Footwear consists of <laughs> what are your are they converse and gucci loafers <laughs> you have we're here for a month you have two things i own two i own two pairs of shoes that's it gucci loafers there's no flip flops there's nothing in between it's it's that it's your no sandals you either have your your converse shoes or your Gucci loafers, and I just, I was looking at that, and you know what's funny? I can tell what kind of mood you're in depending on the shoes you put on. Really? Yeah, oh, totally. You are all business today. You're wearing your loafers. Oh. You wear your Gucci Is loafers. Is that good or bad? It's, it's, well, no, I just know, it's all good. I just know what I, I just, I'm just, I can mentally prepare to what's going on in your world based on the shoes you put on. Nothing else but your shoes. There's a, like maybe two or three things in, in life that I'm extravagant about. Not extra, extravagant, but I will pay full price. Full retail price for, for shoes. Yeah. Good shoes. So Gucci discontinued this shoes. Here's a funny story. <laughs> this is a good story. Gucci discontinued these shoes, and we found a store, like two years ago, Jill found a store that still carried them and still had, like, still had them left over in stock from the di- like two years ago. So she goes and buys. It was in a Nordstrom. She goes and buys <laughs> multiple pairs uh-huh. of these shoes that are not cheap, and then and, and she's like, put them in her closet. I yeah. only know this because I saw the, the thing on the credit card bill. Uh-huh. And puts them in a closet. And, she, and I asked her about it. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I plan on two years from now when the pair that you're wearing is worn out. You can't take them to the shoemaker anymore. I'm going to give you for one of oh, these for Christmas. Oh, another one. I've got <laughs> multiple pairs hidden, stacked away, so I know that, we're okay. That's love. <laughs> that is Peppermint Patty love right there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, it's exactly what I did. In this episode, Jill and I talk about nothing phases me anymore. Here's my speech. What's yours? Jill, great show today. Before we start, let's take a question posted by uh, one of our members on successplant.com, our website, and our free online community. Chaz wrote in and asked, I started thinking about all the letters I just sent out and everybody can see what I'm flipping them for. May, may it be better to have a separate sell website? Oh. Yeah, so what I think Chaz is saying is I have a website. Uh, it's xyz.com or whatever. And I'm sending out, on the letterhead, sending all these letters to purchase property uh, from people. And then they can log on to my website and see that I'm clearly, see that I'm reselling it for way more. And uh, Chaz, you're darn right. And I, I did respond to you in, uh, directly in Success Plant. Because this is a great question, and, and I can tell, and the first sentence I said was, I can tell that you're on your way. If you're having these kinds of thoughts and these concerns, you're, you are in this, you're, you've, committed, you've committed, and you're invested in it. And, uh, and the answer is this, you're, you're dead right. We have a, a separate buy site and sell site. We always have. Well, not always. Like two years into it, I, I created, for the same reason that you're, same thought that you're having, I didn't want the people we're buying this property from to see exactly what we're selling it for. So mm-hmm. I created a, not only a separate site, but a separate entity, separate company, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And we still use it to this very day, the exact same site. And here's the reason, because all those letters that we sent out all over all those years, they still check us on that site and check our credibility and the whole thing. So uh, if you're ready, set up another site and set up another entity. And it doesn't have to be. It's a very, very intelligent, um, well thought out, senior type question. And I don't mean senior to old like me. I mean senior, uh, you know, advanced is what I mean. Senior, <laughs> senior citizen? Like, no, <laughs> you're not AARP. I don't mean uh, a rain man type compulsion <laughs> where you have to buy shoes ahead of your time. Right. 
Oh, we won't. <laughs> yeah. What's really funny is no one, no, I wonder how many people caught the underlying theme is he will never wear any other shoe. And oh my gosh, they're discontinued. What are we going to do in 20 years from now? <laughs> the beach people have, uh, have flip flops and sometimes you don't wear shoes at all. And I just don't roll that way. Yeah. I, I hear this is a perfect example. I am sitting here in shorts and bare feet, and Stephen has on his Gucci loafers and jeans. <laughs> I don't know why. Perfect I don't do it every day. It's not that bad. No, I know you're just kind of you're just kind of business like today. You're in a business like mode, and I appreciate that. You're you're in a get stuff done mode today. Our sales, our property sales, have rocked this week. I swear, we sell more stuff and make more money when we're not in the office. Yeah. <laughs> And it's because of Jill. Jill's had a Jill's had a bell ringing kind of week. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. If you have a question or you want to be on the show, we'd love to have you on the show. Call 800-725-8816. The topic today is nothing phases me anymore. Here's my speech. What's yours? This is the meat of the show. This show is really about taking a good look at all the stuff that you have already figured out in your world. And then taking a look at some other stuff that needs maybe needs some improvement or some work. Jill wrote a little speech for me several days ago, and it prompted me or inspired me to, to do this show. What's the speech, Jill? Okay. I was upset about something. You were. This, this, is, this is, I love this too. This is a great topic, and I'm happy to share this. I was complaining this. about something, I'm sure. I don't even remember what it was. Yeah. Might even have been getting a par- parking ticket. I think that's what it, it was. It might have been a parking ticket. I almost just swore on this show. Oh, my gosh. Never mind. Anyway, yeah, Jill's, well, Jill's response was this. So, Stephen, you're standing on the balcony. You're waiting for me. I remember this exactly. You're on the balcony waiting for me. We're getting ready to... I had just called a car. We're getting ready to go out to dinner. And uh, I walk out, and I just kind of said, Hey, you know, last time I checked, the kids are all healthy and happy. You and I are healthy and happy. Um, all our bills are paid. There's, there's money in the bank. We have properties. I mean, we have, we have wonderful friends and, and, and people around us, our whole community and everything. Gosh, everybody's getting it. They're successful too, by the way. I mean, it's because of us. Thank you. I mean, everything that we're doing is what we set out to do is really happening. We, you have nothing. I mean, or not even nothing, but I guess my question is, what is it? That's got you so upset because last time I checked, we got a pretty good life. How can you argue with that? Thank you. So that's my speech. I would encourage you, listener, to write your own little speech. If you're not capable of doing it, like clearly like I'm not, I'm not capable of writing my own speech, find somebody that's uh, sitting next to you. They'll write it for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good... And if they can't, maybe they shouldn't be sitting next to you. Maybe they shouldn't be sitting next to you. So that's a good one. If you turn to your partner and say, "Hey, help me. I'm I'm struggling here for a minute. Help me. Help me. What's what's all the good stuff we got going on right now?" And they should easily go. And if they oh say, "Oh my gosh, you're well, la- well, it's because you're lazy and ugly," no, and then that's not the right thing. They should be able to say, "You look fantastic. That's you got right. great hair. You lost ten mm-hmm. pounds. Uh, I'm so proud of you. And Everybody's I like you any- happy." The teeth are falling out of your head, but I like you anyway. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. <laughs> you know, you wear the same shirt four yeah. days in a row, but I just don't care. Yeah. Just kidding. There's some hair growing out of your ears, and you haven't noticed it in the last three months. But hey, you know, but you I still like you. laugh. I like you. Yeah, you exactly. make me laugh. You make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's funny is that I naturally wake up with this with a, a version of that mantra in my head every I know day. You do. But I don't think everybody does. I think a lot of people have to sit and kind of consciously think about it. So and I know all people. All the stuff I've done in my life, mm-hmm. all the stuff and all the people that I've learned from and the whole thing, I have never met anybody like you and <laughs> learned more from somebody, anybody. Thank you. I mean it. Thank you. And I don't mean technical skill and accounting and real estate and stuff, but you, you can know all that. And I do, I know, I know a lot of that. But if you don't have a good source of inspiration and, uh, you know, somebody to share it with, really. Mm hmm. It's just useless. It's just it's just uh, Ted Turner angry. Mm-hmm. I'm That's picking true. on Ted Turner this week. You are. It's kind I like of funny. It. It's easy. You know, it made me think about um, men and women. Sometimes we're different, and sometimes we're not. We all need this. 
parents. And I was just thinking about growing up and the my brother and my dad, they're both the same way. I don't know how many men are like this, but they would what they both had the same habit of sticky notes everywhere with inspiration that they would give each other. They would give themselves. It was very interesting. When I would walk into my dad's Wow, desk, really? Yeah, and I walk into my brother's office, the same thing. I'd see sticky notes with inspiration on it. And I thought, how I have it in my head all the time. I don't have to think about it. But for them, and they're strong men, you know, I'm like, you know, successful, you know, whatever. Give us an example, because some of that's really silly. You think so? Some some of that inspirational stuff. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say most of it. No, it wouldn't be like that kind of a thing. Not like, you got this. Yeah. No. Hang but, in there, baby, with a picture of a cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it might be um, reminders, too, of, you know, being on the good job and stay on it. Oh, I mean, I don't want to share some really personal things, but there were like some personal oh. things that they would, that they would write. And, and, um, it was ins- it's it was inspirational to them it was a- my point is they didn't think about it all the time and maybe you don't think about it all the time Steve. I have you. jack thank you i think about it all the time their way of making it uh what it was on sticky notes you, you got to give us an example joe give us an example of something that is really healthy and not a bunch of malarkey that you write on a sticky note and put it on the on a mirror or on a desk Like, here's what would motivate me. What would be yours? I don't know. Uh, buy some land, man. Yeah. Stop whining about it. Buy more property. Yeah. M- one of my dad's was about, was um, getting ready for his, like, a high school reunion and looking good, you know. Oh. And wanting to look good. Like losing weight or something. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. I get that. Mm-hmm. Some things like that. Um, Your dad was the model. Of a, of the ma- of the patriarch in a family. Oh goodness, yes. I mean, he had that the, like extended family. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, like he's should be on the cover of a magazine. <laughs> he's a p- commercial pilot. He just, you know, hard as a rock. Yeah, really good guy. Got me. You know what's interesting? It's we don't really talk about this. It's part of what got me involved in uh, real estate. Watching mm-hmm. him and he and and that was always his side thing. You know. Yeah. Multiple rental properties at one time, investing in land in other states, and and uh, and always really into it. Growing up here in Southern California, you know, watching um, the developers as it was being developed, and and yeah. Dad had relationships with them. A lot of it because he was flying them around. He was chartering these guys around, you know, and stuff. And and I got to go and you know once in a while go in a helicopter ride and stuff like that too. It was fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, so that that kind of started some of it for me, seeing. Seeing these people and what the how, how successful they were with real estate. Like, Wherever oh. your dad is, he's smiling right now. I mean, Thank he's you. got you and, and your brother. Uh, your brother's a, a state treasurer, Arizona state treasurer, and w- mm-hmm. whatever's next for him, I can't imagine. I mean, it's not going to be something good. Yes. So if I had ended up with two kids like you, I'd be happy and smiling down on it, the whole thing. I appreciate that. Thank you. This is the if then segment of our show. If you do X, then Y will happen. If you identify what's working and what's not in your life, then don't change the stuff that works. Only take a look at what you want to improve. I make this mistake all the time, Joe. Some stuff's working great, and then I change it. Why is that? I don't know. This if-then statement is more for me than anybody else. Yeah, that's I'm kind of looking to you. to. I'm kind of wondering why is that. Maybe I should put it on a sticky note and stick it on my face. Maybe you should. Yeah, don't change it. <laughs> don't change. Maybe that's all that's on your sticky note. Hey, you know what? Yeah, don't change. By the way, how cool is that, Stephen? I can actually say this about you. Don't change. That's nice. Yeah. Wow, that's a good compliment. Thanks. I mean, it's true. We're all fuzzy today. We are all fuzzy today. <laughs> but it, it really is true. So much of, of everything, you know, and that's, that's us. We really have a lot figured out. There's a little tweaks that we make, yeah. but there's no big changes. I don't want to make any big changes, and I sh- don't want you to make any big changes. Mm-hmm. Like, please don't come home blonde or do anything crazy. Or pregnant. Don't come home pregnant, I, please. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. They put that on a sticky oh, note. There we go. Don't, come don't home get pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> if you're a woman, put that sticky note on your mirror. There we go. Don't get pregnant. Janet, don't come home pregnant. <laughs> oh my god, that's oh, 
Oh, if you're going to get pregnant anywhere, get pregnant in your own house. <laughs> oh, Jack. <laughs> what? Oh, my goodness. Never a dull moment. If you have a question or you want to be on the show, call 800-725-8816. Or you want to talk about avoiding pregnancy, if call that number. Just kidding. If you're pregnant, call that number. We'll, we'll, talk. we'll, we'll put you on, on the show. there. <laughs> Thanks to you. <laughs> there we go. Julie, you have some inspiration. Oh, boy. I don't know after all that. <laughs> My inspirational thought question today is why do we fall off the wagon oh you know oh my gosh that's brilliant why do we why do we why do we fall off the wagon sometimes what's what is the i don't even understand like fall off the entrepreneurial land by and get your side career going wagon right any wagon all right so there's sometimes there's inspiration that's really really silly i gotta say Mm -hmm. this is not silly thank you this isn't silly little inspirational hang in there baby Garbage. No. This is serious. Why do we start something and not finish it? Exactly. All right. So I have a lot to say. Please. Maybe you're just not motivated in the first place to do it. There's a bunch of stuff that I would start and not finish. Here's an example. You know, I, in, the, in the distant past, I bought a classic car and put it in the garage as a, as a project, like a half-finished project already for a lot less than a, a finished car. And I didn't finish it. I ended up selling it. And I'm not, you know me, I'm not like a hoarder. I don't have a lot Mm-mm. of material stuff. That's not my thing. But you know what? It was, I just bit off two more, two more than I could chew. Mm. I'm a computer guy, you know? Mm-hmm. And changing, the, but getting parts and, and uh, after work at six or seven o'clock at night and, and uh, fixing a car and making it all perfect, that's just not my thing. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with me. I fell off that wagon. Mm-hmm. I'm not set up to be an auto mechanic, whatever. I'm not into it. Now, do I just you want to drive a cool car at the end. Do you make dis- decisions differently now that you've gone through that? Yes, I do. That's good. I do. Jill, you, you should get a psychology PhD. <laughs> oh. I make decisions very differently, differently because of that experience specifically and some other stuff just like that. Jill, this is brilliant stuff today. Thank not you. joking. Thank you. This is not fuzzy today. This is a real compliment. Mm, thank you. I appreciate I that. I got a whole line of failures like that if you want to listen. Give me another one. Well, I'm I'm curious where, what 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 started you on that path? I have I have uh, forty five plus years experience disappointing women. Ah, uh, and then in the end though, I'm not so sure that I'm I kidding. you know I didn't disappoint you. No, I don't disappoint you. Maybe it was just the women. It was the wrong women. Yeah. So and it's I not can like keep there's going if you want. It's not like the women were wrong or bad. It's just it wasn't it just a match for you. Work. It's not a match. That's right. Exactly. That's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, business. Give me a business example. I held my ground for years on this one subject. We are not going to be a, a web presence company. We are going to be a land company. We are going to have one channel of sales, eBay. Wrong. It, it crashed. Mm-hmm. It, it imploded in front of my face and almost killed and almost sunk the ship. Yep. So now I'm, I'm completely have an open mind about social media and uh, we're doing this podcast, all of that. Mm-hmm. And that was because I just, I was, don't be stubborn is what I'm saying, I guess. Right. I fell off that wagon. You did. Good. That, I got thrown off that wagon. Okay, so here's the, next, here's the next piece of it. You're different. You recovered. Some people don't recover. Mm-hmm. That's a scary thing. Some people fall off the wagon and they can't get back on. Right. Well, what's, what's a couple, have you fallen off the wagon? Oh, I'm sure I have. I can't. You wrote this portion of the show and you didn't even, you just thought you were really interested in hearing. A, yeah, I kind of really want to hear what you. You were just sure I had a long list of stuff. And you didn't I really have to thought you would. All. Exactly. I thought you'd take up the whole, the whole section. I don't, I don't really have to discuss anything. It's kind of oh, like, man. it's kind of like, right. If you go to a therapist, they don't share stories. They just talk about oh, you. Right. Just kidding. <laughs> all right. Me falling off the wagon. I'm trying to think of some stuff. Uh, I that you- know that I do. There's things that I start and I don't, I don't finish. And well, I've taken some cooking classes. I mean, it's it's little, but I really have tried. I've tried and beat my head against the wall to yeah. try to be a really good chef. Not gonna happen. I don't have an Emmy. I am really not yeah. serious about it. Yeah, you know, you're you're uh, you. I I can honestly say you enjoy food. Mm-hmm. 
and really actually spend some time on it. Mm-hmm. Not cooking it, but you, you're, you're a foodie, mm-hmm. and I'm not. And uh, you're not. You're the chef part of that's just not there. Oh yeah, no. And there's not. That's fine. Thank just you. like like I enjoy owning the car and driving the cars, but mm-hmm. I don't. I don't cook them. Mm-hmm. Taking some classes, thought I could do some stuff. Yeah, no. So that's just, so that's part of this. It's like, look, don't beat yourself up if this project stopped, and and then just say it's a personality trait. Maybe it's the stuff that you're actually working on that's just not for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, when I'm done with a 10-hour day of staring at a computer and knocking stuff out and talking to people, you know what I do? What's Get that? on the computer I and do a... other stuff, fun stuff. You just love it. Yeah. That's interesting. I like it out and talk to people. Mm-hmm. You know I do. That's what I do. I'll talk to people and then I'll talk to more people. I'll talk to people all day. You, this is a good one. You, I'll talk to people all day and y'all go, oh, I'm tired. And then you and I go out and talk to more people. <laughs> right. And then it's fun. Right. You know, because I really do love it in, in, in the end. Jill, that's a great inspirational piece. What's making you fall off the wagon? It's not a personality trait, probably. It's probably the, su- the subject. Mm-hmm. It's not you. It wasn't right. It's okay. Yeah. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how we use information, that's me. And inspiration, that's me. To get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. Get there first. You constantly surprise me. (laughs) Constantly. Thank you. You're good at thinking on your feet. I got to tell you, that was really good. I throw these out to you and and you really have no idea what's coming and you're really good at uh, coming up with the uh, examples. You say stuff like, well, Steve, how have, you fall, how have you failed or fallen off a wagon? That's, that's like in the forefront of my mind. I can talk about that for oh. hours. <laughs> well, you know what? That, that's kind of interesting. I don't think about them. I, you know what? I know, I I know, know I've made mistakes. Oh, gosh. Everybody does. I'm sure I've made some doozies. Yeah, but I just, I push, I don't choose not to focus on them. So they are not on the forefront for me. <laughs> <laughs> seriously and you can you can tease me and say it's the disneyland in my head maybe it is no it's good okay i mean if we were both just like you i think that we'd be homeless oh well there's a good you point know? that's a very good point that's a lot why we're good and if we were both just like me we'd be in the insane asylum this right and i well we'd be on the computers i mean who knows what we'd yeah. be it would be an analytical nightmare yes it would nothing be would get done paralysis. and we'd be in yeah we would an anal- mm-hmm. that's it nothing would get done or bought or you know i mean it would but it would be <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a long time coming so <laughs> it's good let's go buy something for half price today and resell it jack and jill information and inspiration We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. If you want to get involved or you need more information about our profitable, niche real estate operation, call 480-467-0359. You just might get Jill at the other end of the line. Landacademy.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.